what's going on everybody Johnny Ben here with Trepid Technologies and in today's video we're gonna be finishing up domain 1.4 in our network plus n10-009 course so let's minimize my face here something that's not important for learning and let's finish up domain 1.4 and let's check out our objectives so this is the objective we're gonna go over to finally finish off domain 1.4 I'm gonna get my face just a little bit more out of the way there okay so the first protocol we're going to talk about is ICMP, the Internet Control Message Protocol. This is ping. I'm sure everyone's ping before. If you worked in the help desk, the enterprise, anywhere in IT, and you don't know what ping is, that is a shame. Most people will know ping. I, and I've been asked this on network engineer interviews. What is ICMP? It's ping, right? Synonymous. Everyone's used to using ping. But the Internet Control Message Protocol sends echoes, echo requests, and we get echo replies, echo requests back from our destination to make sure that we have IP reachability. From any terminal, I'm gonna open up my MacBook terminal here and a Windows, a command prompt and a Linux bash shell. If we wanna ping, we wanna test if we can reach somewhere. Let me zoom in here, it's real easy. We just open up a terminal, bash shell, command prompt and type in ping. Now on a MacBook and Linux, pings are gonna be like nonstop. Um, in Windows, you put a dash T after if you want a continuous ping, right? There's a lot of other things we can do with ping as well, like other various options we can put at the end, uh, like changing up the packet size, things like that. But as you can see here, we have reachability to 8.8.8.8, Google's DNS servers. Next, we're going to talk about TCP. This is that layer four control protocols that we already went over when we talked about the OSI model. We did a bit of a deep dive. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I hope you're watching these videos in order. But the transmission control protocol, reliable way to send traffic. We established TCP data channels after the three-way handshake where the initiation from the sender to the receiver, client to server is going to be a SYN flag in that uh, TCP header. You can see I drew up a header over here. You can see what that TCP segment or header looks like. The server is just going to reply with the SYN ACK, that SYN initiating a TCP connection back to the sender and that ACK acknowledging the sender's SYN. Then the sender will send just a ACK flag back to the receiver, client to server. And then we had that TCP data channel established. And now we can start sending, receiving, uploading, and downloading traffic. So remember, TCP is reliable and it's takes a three-way handshake. All right, TCP. If we wanna end the session, we can send a fin flag. So we have all these different flags in our TCP sessions that we can use. TCP is typically used for applications where the order of data, the integrity of data, and we mean integrity, meaning that it all gets there, is important. We're typically gonna use TCP. UDP, the user datagram protocol, our other layer four protocol, that's unreliable that's not going to have a three-way handshake that's just going to send it's just going to send we'll have some checksums of course we have that source and destination port and that's it that's all our udp header is you can see here it's eight bytes compared to the tcp 20 bytes and ipv4 right and something else i want to take note here is the traffic types so with tcp a little bit too far with tcp we only have unicast, okay? It can only be one-to-one. -one. Now with UDP, it can be unicast, one-to-one -one transmission, broadcast, which is one to all, meaning if I'm broadcasting something, it's going to be UDP, and every single uh, node in that broadcast domain is going to receive my information. And they're, they're going to receive. They have no option, right? That's a broadcast. With a multicast, message that's a one to many so that's where i'm sending out a message or a stream or a video or a signal and only the nodes that request will receive that it's not one to one it's one to many because multiple nodes can receive that transmission but they're not forced to so i like to explain multicast when i teach like my students in person think about radio channels if i tune into 107.9 i hear that radio channel I tuned into it though. Does that mean all the other frequencies are not still being uh, transmitted? No, 88.9, 92.3, they're still in the airwaves. They're still being transmitted. That RF signal is still hitting my antenna, but unless I tune into it, I won't listen. I won't hear that channel. 
Multicast is the same way. If I'm sending a stream to 224.1.20.3 and I don't send that IGMP join message and it goes up my tree, the reverse path forwarding tree, not going to get too deep in multicast. If I don't send that IGMP join from my client that's trying to listen to that multicast stream being sent, I'm not going to get it then. But I, it's still there though. It's still possible. I'm just not going to get it unless I tune into it. So that's multicast. That is one too many. Okay, now we're going to get into some VPN technologies here. GRE, the generic routing encapsulation. This is a tunneling protocol that was developed by Cisco that's going to mask your IP header and allow you to create those uh, direct, direct, those direct tunnel connections between devices. If you pay for our self-paced course online, you'll get some bonus content where you see me configure GRE and IPsec. Um, it's really easy though from the Cisco CLI. With GRE, again, what we're getting here is really just masking. We're just putting that additional GRE header and getting a new IP header, but it provides us no confidentiality, no encryption at all. But what it does do is this Office A, if it's located in Phoenix, and we have an office over here located in New York, and this could, I have one ISP drawn up here, but this would be multiple ISPs, we can create that GRE connection, and now we can route traffic through that tunnel, and this is going to feel and act like it's directly connected to each other, our offices. It's a VPN technology. It just provides absolutely no security. With GRE, though, multicast, unicast, anycast is allowed through. IPsec. Now, this is a tunneling and VPN technology that does do encryption. So the three main components of IPsec VPN tunnels is the authentication header, which provides data integrity, authentication, provides non-repudiation, right? It allows us to be authenticated and protects against replay attacks. Then we have the encapsulating security payload, which is going to provide that encryption. Uh, it's going to, you know, be that, that header that provides it. And then we have the internet key exchange. So the Ike version 1, version 2 is a protocol. It's actually going to set up our SA, our security association, in the IPsec protocol suite. So IPsec has these three main components that delivers us security and a VPN technology. There's going to be two major modes in IPsec, tunnel mode and transport mode. And if we go to the next slide, I have a little bit more of a deep dive into here. Well, here's what an, an IP header looks like just with nothing, no security. With transport mode, we get that ISP header here, but as you can see, it doesn't encapsulate our original IP header. Yes, it provides this encryption of our data. It provides authentication, but our IP header is still exposed. Now with tunnel mode, we're actually going to encrypt the data. We're going to encrypt that ESP trailer, and we're going to encrypt our original IP header. We're going to add that new an ESP header, which we're providing authentication, and then we get a whole new IP header. So that IP header, like if we were doing a man-in-the-middle attack, this is all we would see in tunnel mode. Where transport mode, we could still see that original IP header, which I like tunnel mode, right? It actually protects that original IP header and still provides uh, those features of IPsec like encryption and authentication, confidentiality, non-repudiation, right? Okay, then the last thing we're going to talk about, a traffic type called Anycast. So Anycast is a one-to-one -one of many. <laughs> so what we mean by that is, we can use Inicast and DNS services and CDN networks where we say, hey, client, you're trying to reach this server. Well, go to the IP address that's closest to you. So it's going to go to the nearest server. But in DNS, guess what? These servers, they may be clones of each other, maybe replicate, like replicating each other, and they can actually have the same IP address thanks to Anycast. And depending where our clients are geographically or wherever the case may be, they're going to go to the nearest server improving response times and load distribution. Okay, now let's do our quiz and let's sign off on domain 1.4. Okay, so I'm in my Network Plus course and let's go ahead and do domain 1.4.3 quiz. Again, I might clip this. So I'm going to expand my face here. There we go. Question one, which tunneling protocol encapsulates a wide variety of network layer protocols inside virtual point-to-point -point connection. Okay, so obviously I'm going to be thinking 
A or B, a tunneling protocol. So let's see here. That is GRE. So GRE is directly a tunneling protocol, and that's going to allow many types of other traffic through the internet, right? It's essentially what we're saying here. And like I kind of told you guys, GRE, uh, it allows like multicast and unicast, any types of traffic, where IPsec does not. IPsec only does unicast traffic. Question two, which of the following traffic types involves sending data to the nearest or best receiver among multiple potential receivers? That's going to be anycast. That's a one-to-one -to, -one to many, right? Question three, which protocol uses a three-way hand TCP, right? But let's finish. Uses a three-way handshake process to establish a reliable connection between two devices. TCP, right, guys? It's reliable, SYN, ACK, ACK, three-way handshake. Which protocol suite is widely used in VPNs to secure data transmission and includes components like authentication header, encapsulation security payloads, and the internet key exchange? That's IPsec. That's a VPN technology that provides us all those security features. Question five. Which traffic type is used when a packet is sent from one center to all devices in a network segment? That's going to be a broadcast, one to all. Question six. Which of the following IPsec components is responsible for providing data encryption that's going to be esp the encapsulating security payload that's what provides us our confidentiality our data in transit encryption question seven which of the following protocols is primarily used for network diagnostics and operates without a specific port number that's going to be icmp ping or the internet control message protocol and then question eight which of the following is a characteristic of UDP compared to TCP? We're going to go with C. Faster, I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. I guess it is faster. Uh, that's why we use it, right? I mean, yeah, it's faster. And guess what? We got 100%, guys. Let's go. That finishes up Domain 1.4. I want to thank everyone for viewing. And do not forget to like and subscribe and make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell too because we're going to be finishing up this Network Plus course hopefully within 30 days. Thank you for viewing.